talk about the porpoise of life. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard of the porpoise of life. It's this kind of rare aquatic mammal <laughs> which appears only at certain times, okay, and only to certain very privileged people. It has this kind of uh, 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 very shy. It'll never come out in the broad daytime. Only at twilight does the porpoise of life appear, mm -hmm. and only to sailors who are just about to drown. <laughs> yeah? And this porpoise of life as uh, has often regarded as a mythical creature, but actually is uh, has a strange connection with the seahorse. And like the seahorse, it's been known to give rise to deserving poets and mystics on occasion. So the... Uh, <coughs> but I decided not to give a talk about the purpose of life. <laughs> so the purpose of life instead, when, you know, when... Uh, <coughs> Well, I, I grew up. I grew up as a Catholic. I grew up as a Catholic and went to a Catholic school. And uh, I was just uh, chatting with Justine earlier, saying that when, because I was brought up in a, in a Catholic school, when I went to the first philosopher I ever read was I encountered in a second-hand bookshop Nietzsche, the, the Antichrist. I thought, fantastic, <laughs> that's the one for me. You know, growing up in a Catholic school, this is exactly what it programs you to enjoy. And uh, so I got that. And so I was convinced at a very early age to be a very <coughs> hard-line atheist. But the interesting thing was that I was actually quite interested in religion. Okay? And I noticed there's a difference, a difference between myself and all my friends because we tend to argue about does God exist and all of these kinds of things. And I used to really enjoy like arguing with the Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses who come round to the house and you know, you know, argue with them about you know, creationism and so on. And it was great fun. And all my friends none of whom it really mattered. And so they kind of kept on being Catholics, but not really in a meaningful way, you know? And uh, they did, it, it, kind of meant, it, it didn't really mean enough for them to actually investigate the ideas. But for me, it was, very, it was something that was always very crucial. It mattered. Does God exist or does not God not exist? I thought this was important. Is religion true or not? And I always felt that. Very deep in, I had a very deep intuition that if there ever was a religion that I could believe in and could have faith in, then you know, what could I do but to devote my life to that? I couldn't understand how people would say, oh, I'm a Catholic, I'm a this, I'm a that. I'm only using Catholics because that's the example I was brought up with. And then, of course, go and do all these things that are completely against what their religion is teaching. And this is one of the great tragedies of our life uh, in the world today. In a sense, we're kind of... In some ways, we think we've maybe outgrown traditional religions, but actually most people haven't even grown up to the messages which were taught by uh, Jesus and Muhammad and so on. And we haven't even actually aspired to that, haven't even got ourselves up to that level yet, much less having outgrown things. And so I spent many years as a very hardline atheist, and uh, after a while uh, I got interested in Buddhism. And the more I got interested in Buddhism, the more you start to learn to appreciate uh, different kinds of uh, approaches to things. So different kinds of approaches to question like the meaning of life or the purpose of life. From a Buddhist point of view, pur what's the purpose of life? Well, from one sense, it doesn't have any. Okay? So Buddhism is often accused of being a nihilistic religion. Okay? And there's, there's, a, there's a certain sense in which you could say that that's correct. And uh, <coughs> when the Buddha was asked about this, the Buddha was challenged on this point. He said, you're a nihilist. And the Buddha said, well, yeah, if you, thought, if you, if you mean that I mean annihilation of greed, hatred, and delusion, and annihilation of suffering, then absolutely, I'm, I'm an annihilist in that sense. And so this is uh, a certain sense in which Buddhism has this nihilistic tendency. But there's another sense in which it has a very positive tendency. And so on an emotional or psychological level, it has a very positive tendency. So, from Buddha's point of view, the purpose of life is not something which we are presented with. Okay, it's not uh, a given, but it's something which we uh, can, uh, as it were, seek or can tune into or can uh, find a, find some kind of resonance with. Ultimately, of course, the the great goal of the great purpose of Buddhism is nibbana, and uh, nibbana as the Buddha described it as like the going out of the flame, yeah? going out of the fires of greed, hatred, and delusion, going out of the fires of suffering. 
and uh, the Buddha was very reluctant to speak of Nibbana in any kind of uh, positivistic sense. He wasn't going to say Nibbana is this kind of thing or is that kind of thing. Obviously, as soon as we start using that kind of language, we start to get attached and we start to attach to the idea of it rather than to the, uh, to the reality or the experience that we're talking about. And uh, one of my favorite uh, Christian bishops, Bishop Spong, talks about this in the, in the Christian perspective and says that he says that uh, the Christian Bible tells us not to get attached to our idols, not to worship idols. But in fact, the Christian religions have, according to Bishop Spong, have often uh, attached to the theologies which they create and their ideas of what God is. And I think there's something really to that, and the same is true within a Buddhist perspective as well. And so this is always the, the, the purpose of, or the, 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 the method of a sincere spiritual practice is to try to deconstruct all of those kinds of ideas, let go of those preconceived and handed down ideas of what our religion is, what our spiritual practice is, and try to go back to that point of where is that truth, where is that reality inside myself? How can I get in contact with that? How can I let go? How can I find the truth in here? And so this is where the path of Buddhism is leading us.